In this video, we're going to be talking about the board in this packet. On the left hand side, we have the NAS A32, and there's an entire series where we go through all the elements of the NAS A32 that includes setting up things like the Minim OSD, adding GPS, adding Bluetooth adding you name it to this great little board. Now, in addition to getting it in this classic form factor, there's also different versions available. And the one we're going to go through in this video and talk about the differences really between this and the uh, NAS A32 is this board here. Now this board is the Flip32, which is a different implementation of everything that's on the other board. And as you can see, it has more traditional three pin headers for both the RC inputs and also the motor outs as well. And it still has all the pins for things like the voltage sensing, the buzzer, but also down here, it had pins for a UR, an I2C connector and other things as well. So it gives you all of the same functionality as the original NAS A32, but at a lower price point. So this one's actually one that we've got um, from Banggood. So here's the slide on the screen. This shows you what we've got. Uh, the SKU number, as you can see, um, well, may maybe not on the packet, is uh, SKU 177478, and it is the Flip32 flight controller with 32-bit STM3210 DOF. And we'll talk about what that tend off means in a minute. But in this video, what we're going to do is talk about what the DOF things mean. Let's cover that first. Then we'll talk about the uh, Flip32 versus the NAS A32 and the different pinouts. Because you're going to need to be aware of that. Because you'll still be able to follow each of the NAS A32 videos using the Flip32. But just be aware that some places plug in um, than others and uh, we'll talk about that. Then we'll go through the different firmware options for this board. We'll end up installing Clean Flight on it in this video. That's what I'm installed and using on the NAS A32. Um, I'm a big fan of Clean Flight. It's changing a little bit quickly at the moment for me right now. Every time I connect to it, I need an update, but all those changes are bringing new features. Then we'll go and um, look at a couple of wiring examples of the common pieces for this board, typically the Minim OSD, the GPS, and the Bluetooth module. But before I go any further, I need to say a very big thank you as part of this video to a gentleman called John Carr, who has sent me this board as a thank you for the help that I've been giving him via the channel so that I could uh, make this video and test out the Flip32 myself. So John, thank you so much. You are uh, very generous in sending this to me. Thank you again for it. I really do appreciate it and look forward to talking to you soon. So now that said, let's just get stuck in and talk about what these DOF numbers are all about and why they're there. So DOF or DOF stands for Degrees of Freedom and it's a shorthand way to know how much control and sensors there are built into the board that you're looking at and there's lots of different numbers and we'll go through each of them remembering that this is a 10 DOF board. Now the first is uh, 3 DOF. 3 DOF is either a 3 axis accelerometer or a 3 axis gyroscope. In practice, you don't tend to find these very often because they tend to have what's called 6 DOF, and that's where you actually have both a 3 axis accelerometer and a 3 axis gyro. And the cheap and cheerful versions of things like the NAS A32, uh, there is a um, kind of an acro version, and that is 6 DOF because it has the 3 axis accelerometer and the 3 axis gyro. And that's also what the CC3D board is as well. And it gives you the ability for basic flight control and stabilization. The next one here then is 9 DOF. And that corresponds to having not only the 3 axis accelerometer and the 3 axis gyro, but also having a compass that operates in 3 axes as well. So you have the 3 axes from the accelerometer, the 3 from the gyro, and the 3, three from the compass gives you 9 DOF. Now this is a 10 DOF board, and a 10 DOF board will actually give you the accelerometer, the gyro, the compass, 
and importantly, the barometer. And you need the compass to be able to use an external GPS for the GPS flight modes. And having a barometer is really important because it allows you to control and manage the height uh, automatically using the barometer function in the code. The last one then is uh, sometimes referred to as 11 DOF, and that is the full enchilada, where you pretty much have all the sensors on there that you're going to need. So that would be your three axis accelerometer, it would be the three axis gyro, the compass, barometer, and also a GPS. And we can add a GPS to the Flip32 and give it that functionality and turn it from a 10 to an 11 DOF device. But the board we have here, as we've talked about, is 10 DOF, so it's equivalent to the full version of the NASA 32. And that's where this board can appear a lot cheaper because it's a lot less expensive than the full NASA 32 version. It also, in my opinion, is easier to connect up because whereas we had to do a lot of soldering with some rather weird and wacky connectors to connect up the original NASA 32, this is using standard three pin servo connections all the way around so we can just plug our servo wires in nice and easily. So if this is something you're building and you're new to quad building, there's a couple of less steps that you need to do to get it working, as well being a little bit cheaper. So now we've talked about that, then we need to talk about the different pinouts on the boards. They are different in the way they're laid out, but they're functionally equivalent. So here we have them kind of side by side. Here's the NASA 32, uh, a bare bones version on the left hand side. And on the right hand side is the Flip 32 board that we have here on the table. If we add all of the controls around the outside, you can see that there's an awful lot of things that we can connect to. So, um, if I can kind of just show you as it's on the diagram. So here on the right hand side, here are the connections for the RC inputs with channel 1 at the top and channel 8 at the bottom with the ground pin being on the outside plus 5 volts in the middle and the signal pin being towards the inside of the board. On the other side, then we have the motor outputs. And again, nice and easy because we have the full three pins to connect into, the ground pins on the outside plus 5 volts in the middle and the signal pin is on the very inside. And it goes motor one at the bottom, two, three, four, five, and six. The two sets of two pins underneath the motor connections, the very bottom one is for the buzzer. And you'll know, have to be careful here because the outside pin is positive and the inside pin is negative. And then above that is the VBAT or battery connections to your main flight battery so that you can do things and again, be really careful about that because now the plus voltage is on the right hand side not on the left like it is with the buzzer. A couple of other things then obviously you have a USB micro connector at the bottom just like the NASA 32. There's a couple of boot pins up here at the top. We are going to talk about those because there is confusion a little bit about how you actually flash this board. Some people think you need to uh, bridge those, some people don't. We'll actually test it here and um, flash it with clean flight and we'll actually show you exactly what you can and can't do. And then underneath we have the SWD connector and then we have a UART and an IC, I2C connector as well. And those are coming very handy when we want to connect things like a Bluetooth and um, or a Minim OSD. And those, kind of, those pins at the bottom are available on the NASA 32 but they're available in the middle and you have to uh, access these um, these two outputs here and do an extra little bit of soldering. So it is slightly more straightforward to actually put things on this board. If you wanted to use these two ports at the bottom you're obviously going to have to break some of these off and um, solder them in but it's a relatively simple operation. So now we know that let's just compare where the pin outs are on this board compared to the NASA 32. Let's just put them side by side just as a reference because the idea is, is that once you've watched this video you should be able to watch any of the NASA 32 series and use the Flip 32 instead of the NASA 32 board by just transposing where all the pins are. So let's just put that on one image and uh, that will act as a crib sheet for you. 
So here on the left hand side is a classic NAS A32 and on the right hand side is our new friend the Flip32. Now the NAS A32 on the left you can see that we have all of the RC inputs in uh, 10 pins down the left hand side. We have the motor outputs at the top and then we have our VBAT buzzer telemetry at the bottom right hand side and that um, I2C connections, the SCL and SDA, are actually from those two pins that we've just looked at in the middle of the board. On the right hand side we have the Flip32 and it is slightly different. The motor outputs are on the left of what we discussed, M1 at the bottom, M6 at the top. Then underneath that we have the VBAT and buzzer connectors. On the right hand side we have the RC inputs, channel 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, exactly as the NAS A32, but this time we have the luxury of having three connectors for each of the inputs. And then at the bottom we have that SWD, the UART and the I2C. So you can see if we wanted to connect or anything that was connecting to the I2C port in the NAS A32 videos and connecting to those pins in the middle of the board, we don't need to go there. We can actually go to the I2C pins that are right on the very edge of the board of the Flip32. And it will work in exactly the same way, the code runs the same way, and the configuration does too. So now we've talked about that and we have that comparison, the next thing we need to talk about is the firmware that you can run on this great little board. So if you go underneath the listing uh, for this Flip32 board on the Banggood website, you'll find a link to the manual. And if you download the manual, you'll uh, notice it goes through all the bits and pieces that we've talked about. It has the connection diagram, and it talks through how you put the firmware up dot update on using an STM32 flash loader and um, interestingly in the demonstration it's actually loading something called base flight and you can see here on the right hand side it's loading base flight dot hex which is the firmware implementation for the board. If you go further down then it talks about how you connect the motors up and um, general settings etc. Now it's interesting that in the manual it's talking about base flight because base flight isn't the only option for us for the Flip32. There are three different choices for us, uh, two of them for firmware and all three of them for how we talk to the board and the interface we use to configure it. On the left hand side we have the traditional MultiWii version 2.3 graphical user interface. You can't use the MultiWii code in its vanilla form, it won't go onto or run on a NAS A32 or a Flip32. But because the code is so similar under the covers to the multi week code, you can use a version 2.3 or later graphical user interface to talk to the board and set things up. But really, you probably wouldn't use that because you might as well use the same graphical user interface that's designed to work with the firmware that you're loading. So that leaves us with two. Base flight is the one that we talked about in the original manual that we've just had a look at. Base flight has been around for a long time. It has a lot of, as I said, code that's come from the MultiWii platform, which in my opinion is a good thing because MultiWii has been around for a while and I've been running the MultiWii platform for a couple of years and love them. They're great. Um, the base flight application runs as a Google app in Google Chrome and it's a really easy to use interface, has a really nice setup wizard, it's mature stable code, it was designed and um, optimized to run for FPV and acro flying. It can be used to both configure the board and set on firmware and also use the GUI graphical user interface to then configure it and it runs on different multiple platforms. So Base Flight is a very standard, solid, mature implementation of the firmware that you can use. Then you have Clean Flight. Clean Flight is the newer kid on the block. It's a branch of Base Flight and it's the one that is getting an awful lot of developer time and effort right now and is constantly coming out with new innovation and new features. It is trying to push the possible with the NAS A32 and Flip32 boards and will also run on things like CC3D as well. So with Clean Flight, you can have a consistent flight control set across multiple 32-bit flight boards, which I think is a really nice feature. And everything is changing so quickly, which means that the GPS code has been completely rewritten and the implementation is getting better and better all the time. 
I think as I'm recording this in early April, we're about version 1.8, but I expect in a couple of weeks we'll have version 1.9 or later. The nice thing about Clean Flight for me is that it's the one that is pushing the envelope in terms of what is possible with this board, connecting it to things like GPS, minimum OSD, on screen displays, sonar, you name it. Everything seems to work a little bit better under Clean Flight. Everyone has their own particular favourites of whether or not base flight or clean flight. There seems to be very distinct camps. Um, I have tried both. Personally, for me, it's clean flight. I'm going to put clean flight onto this Flip32 for two reasons, really. One, because I want to make sure that I'm using the latest and greatest technology versions that I can get my hands on. And secondly, it's then consistent with the NASA 32 videos that I've already made. So when you come to do things in... Uh, flip 32 land you can look at the NAS 32 video and it's the same kind of interface using clean flight as we're going to load on the board right now so now we've figured that out the next thing we need to do is then we need to drag out the board set it all up and uh, see if we can get clean flight loaded on it so that we can confirm it's all working so here we are on our trusty netbook and we'll start clean flight and we're going to run the latest version of the configurator as it is um, as we're doing the video. Uh, 0 0.62.1, uh, the welcome screen is where you start from and then what we need to do is click on firmware flasher. Once we've clicked on firmware flasher then we're going to choose a board. Um, let me just choose the latest stable version. We need to choose the NASA version. And we're going to then plug in the board before we go any further. There we go. And we saw COM22 appear in the top left hand corner. And as you can see in the video, it's just sat there with a single blue light. Now, we're not going to click on any of these. We're just going to say load firmware online. Get the firmware from the servers. And then we're going to say flash firmware. And there it goes running. So we have all three lights lit now. The blue, the red and the green. It's hard for the camera to pick it up with the LEDs being so bright, but they're all absolutely on solid. Now verifying the load. Programming successful. Great. Now she's rebooted. And we can have a look at what it actually looks like. So now we've flashed it and it's rebooted. We'll click on connect. And now as I move the board around, you'll see it moving on the screen. Now obviously the first thing we need to do is calibrate the accelerometer and then calibrate the magnetometer and carry on from there. And you can see nicely up here in the right hand side, we're absolutely running the Tendoff version of the board. Not only are the gyroscopes and accelerometers showing, but the magnetometer and barometer is showing perfectly as well. So from here, we can carry on uh, with the setup video for the original NAS A32 to go through all the additional steps, but that's how we flash the firmware onto the board. Really straightforward. We don't have to bother shorting out any pins. Clean Flight will do everything for us. So now we have the board completely configured with the firmware. Uh, what you can do is actually now go back to the first NASA 32 video that uh, was listed in the playlist, and that will take you through all the steps to set up the Flip32 board so that it's working perfectly. Calibrating the accelerometer and the magnetometer is obviously the first two steps, but then you can work through setting uh, your modes and everything else. Once it's set up, then there are a couple of common things that people like to add onto the NAS 32 and also now we can do it onto the Flip32. Now we know where all the pins are. So let me show you a couple of the wiring diagrams to give you an idea of the differences between the NAS 32 the full version, and the Flip32 that we've just set up. The first one we'll talk about is where you plug in a Bluetooth adapter. So the Bluetooth adapter actually plugs into the UART port towards the bottom, so you will have to 
wire and, and solder an additional four pins into that row, but it's relatively straightforward. Uh, so it plugs into each of those pins um, one by one. The important thing, of course, is to cross over the receive and transmit pins between the UART port on the Flip32 and the Bluetooth adapter itself. If you watch the video uh, for the NASA 32 for the Bluetooth adapter, we also cover how you configure the Bluetooth adapter so that you can change the pin code, change the name of it, and make sure that it's working perfectly. Um, you set it up in exactly the same way, irrespective of whether it's the Flip32 or the NASA 32, but you just plug it in here rather than where it is in that video. The next one we'll talk about is the Minim OSD. This is a fantastic little board, only about $12, about £10, and for that you get an on-screen display that works beautifully, listening to the telemetry information that comes out of the board. Now the UART, again, is exactly the same as we would use for the Bluetooth, and actually you can connect the Minim OSD and the Bluetooth in parallel if you really wanted to. So it's exactly the same wires, with again the receive and transmit crossed over. So if you watch the NASA 32 Minim OSD video, it'll go through how you configure the Minim OSD, flash the firmware, make sure it's set up perfectly, then not only connect it to the NASA 32 Flip32 as we have here, but also then how you connect it up to the camera. And the last one is the GPS, which is actually probably the favourite addition that comes onto these boards that takes it from a 10 DOF to an 11 DOF. And this one is a little bit more complicated. I would watch the NASA 32 video for adding the GPS because we go through configuring the GPS, making sure that it's set up for U blocks, uh, 115 200 board, make sure that none of the additional bits and pieces isn't needed. Uh, you can either use a CN06 or a NEO06 GPS module. They're really cheap now. You can get them from everywhere Banggood, Hobby King, uh, eBay. The choice is yours. But just like the NASA 32 when you watch that video you'll notice that the, you plug them in into channels 3 and 4 for the receive and transmit pins into the GPS unit. Exactly the same on this. This will make sense when you watch the NASA 32 video. Um, it works identically. So what was on pin 3 and 4 kind of shunts down a little bit to move on pin 5 and 6. But if you watch that GPS video, all will become clear. But this is the wiring diagram. The nice thing about this is there are so many more places on the board to pull off the plus 5 volts and ground that you need to power these external devices because you have all of these additional uh, lines around the outside that are carrying the, uh, the ground and plus 5 volts Whereas with the NASA 32, sometimes you have to be a little bit creative, particularly when you're running six motors. So hopefully for those of you that are interested in the Flip 32, it's absolutely a viable option. It's a lot cheaper than the NASA 32. It's exactly the same high-end version with the same kind of technology in terms of the accelerometers, the gyro, the bio barometer, the magnetometer, and you can add all the same bits and pieces to it as well. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, and happy flying.